All right, so this is part two of our Index Universal Life Insurance uh, Policy Loan Provision video. If you haven't seen the first one, you should probably check that out first. We'll link it here above. In this installment, we're gonna go through some actual examples of how loans would work with some specific company language, and we'll be showing some screenshots. Uh, and we're also gonna talk about some different types of flexibility that you may have depending on the company that you choose to work with. Uh, like the first video, uh, my camera wasn't working Working, and so it's just going to be my screen share and the audio portion, and I hope that it's helpful for you. The next thing I want to talk about when it comes to loans is flexibility. There's a lot going into loans and, and their flexibility, but I really just want to touch on uh, maybe two main points, and that is a good loan provision will keep you in control. What I mean by that is a good loan provision is going to let you continue to choose the index you are invested in. Now that may sound foreign to you because why wouldn't they let you choose what index you're invested in? Well, there's a lot of loan provisions and we'll look at some in a second here where as soon as you choose, it's typically their fixed participating loan provision. As soon as you choose their fixed participating loan provision, let's say that you've got 100% of your dollars in the S&P index. And let's say that you take that $50,000 loan from the example that we had above. You take that $50,000 loan and the company is gonna take $50,000 out of of your S&P index and they're going to deposit it into a loan agreement account. And that loan agreement account is essentially a separately published index that has its own participation rates, it has its own caps, it has its own crediting methodology and you don't get to determine or you don't get to choose where that $50,000 is going, the company chooses for you. So if there's an index that you really like, um, a good example would be, uh, well, I don't, I don't wanna name the carrier, but there's some companies out there that have um, brand new index options that they say perform really, really well. And so they say, hey, this is why you should do business with us. We have this really good indexed uh, account. It's grown you know, 20, 30%. It's gonna knock the socks off the competition. You should put your money with us because we've got the best index. But if that same policy has this type of fixed loan agreement where as soon as you start taking loans, they flip flop how you're invested. They say, okay, I know that we told you we have this great index and that's why you should do business with us. But as soon as you start taking loans on your contract, if you don't want a variable rate, right? If you don't want a variable rate and you want a fixed rate where you know exactly what the charge is gonna be, okay, well, you don't get to use that high flying index anymore. We're gonna put you in our special loan agreement account uh, and we can change the caps and the rates on that loan agreement account without touching any of the other policies uh, on the books or any of the other index accounts on the books. I don't love that. Why don't I love that? Because that gives control to the company and it takes control away from you. So good loan provisions are gonna allow you flexibility on where you are invested. So the question you need to ask is, can I control where my money is allocated? in all the different loan provisions on the policy. Okay, so that's the first thing. Uh, the second thing is it's really cool. Some companies give you the ability to actually take that $50,000 loan and tie it to a specific index of your choosing. Not all companies allow that. So, so that would be two examples of really good loan flexibility. I'll add one more as a bonus, switching back and forth between wash loans and participating loans. You want to know if there's a cap on how many times you can do that. A lot of companies will cap you on how many times you can switch back and forth. Okay, so I want to show you some examples of some loan provisions uh, and just kind of the, the loan provision language that we see in some of these different policies. So I've got a screenshot here uh, of some different loan provisions that kind of just shows everything on one spot. So we've actually got three different loan provisions on this kind of screenshot that we're looking at. Uh, we have this top section here, we have this middle section and the bottom section. So these are three different policies uh, I've just kind of combined them all into one screen so we don't have to flip back and forth. So at the top, you can see we have an index loan and we have a fixed loan. Uh, both of these are um, fixed to a degree because this index loan here, 5% in all policy years, indexed interest credited at the end of the policy year based on the selected allocation. So you get to choose where your money's invested, you get to select where it goes, and it's a 5% charge in all years and it's a participating loan. And then we also have this wash loan provision, which is super standard language. Um, nothing really to see there. 
the section below the top, uh, we have another form of loan. So if you take loans from your policy, you've got two types or rather three types. Uh, you've got your participating variable loans uh, and those are charged a variable loan interest rate. And you do get to choose uh, when selected, all account value will remain in the various interest strategies and loan values will continue to earn an interest as if no loan had been taken from the policy. So if you choose the participating variable loan, you have complete control over where that money goes. That's awesome. Uh, we also have these standard loans. So standard loans are charged a variable loan interest rate. They will be transferred to the various crediting strategies and placed in a segregated loan collateral account and will be credited with, you know, so here's our wash loan provisions, essentially. So they don't tell you what rate they're going to charge you, but they do say the loan rate will be uh, the loan rate minus 50 basis points in years one through 10 and the loan rate will be the same as the crediting rate in years 11 plus. So that's a real wash loan where they don't give the company, the company has no wiggle room here to charge you more than they credit you on their wash loan provision. And that's what you would want. And then we have this option here at the bottom. Uh, we have variable loans and we have fixed loans. So the variable loans uh, track with the Moody's corporate bond yield, just like we said earlier. Uh, currently, it's a 5% charge and the maximum charge, let's make this a little bit smaller so that we can kind of dig into the actual line item here. So check this out. The amount borrowed will be charged uh, tied to the Moody's corporate bond yield. The maximum rate of interest charged on a variable loan will be 5%. Okay, so that's awesome. This is a variable loan rate where they give us a cap. The cap is 5%. If we compare that to our option at the top, 5% in all years, this is a variable loan rate that you might want because if interest rates are low, you can borrow at lower than five, but we know it'll never be more than five. Okay, that's a good variable loan provision. And they're assuming it's at 5%. So you know that the actual illustration here is using good numbers. And then they have their fixed loans. They can borrow amount up to the surrender value. The maximum loan interest rate is 8% payable in arrears and the loan portion of the account will grow at the loan collateral interest rate of 6%. After the 10th policy year, the policy guarantees a preferred loan. So this is that wash loan provision. It's saying, hey, if you wanna take this fixed loan, we're gonna, uh, the maximum loan interest rate is eight. We're gonna charge you six, uh, but after year 10, they're gonna equal itself out. There's gonna be no charge. So that's a real wash loan. Th these are all pretty good loan provisions. I wanna show you uh, another loan provision that I think is uh, pretty egregious. So again, the policy that we're looking at here has two main loan provisions that we're looking at. We've got this variable interest policy rate loan, and then we have this fixed interest participating loan. Uh, and this one is <laughs> especially interesting because I'm not quite sure how they arrive at these terms. And we'll look at that in a second. So they have their variable rate, uh, which is also, again, tied to the Moody's corporate bond yield. Uh, however, this loan interest will never be greater than 6% per year. Okay, so here again, we have a variable interest rate loan, but we know what the cap is. It's 6%. I can live with a variable loan like that because I know what the possible outcomes are. It's never going to be higher than 6%. Uh, and if we use this particular variable loan rate, uh, we continue to get credits based on where our money is as if it was not loaned out, which means we retain control over where the money is invested, okay? Now, if we want the fixed loan on this particular policy, we've got this fixed interest participating loan. And this one is uh, especially interesting uh, because it's, it's not really a fixed rate. I mean, look at it here. The fixed rate participating loan option is available beginning in the first year. The fixed rate participating loan interest rate will be declared by the company. We will notify you of any loan interest rate change at least 30 days prior to it taking effect if you have a fixed rate participating policy loan. Okay, well, <laughs> if it's a fixed rate participating policy loan, why would they ever need to notify me that they're changing the rate? That is not a fixed rate. That's a variable rate. So uh, you just need to understand, well, let's go further. The account value securing the policy debt will continue to receive the interest earned on your fixed account 
and the index credits earned on your index account as if it was not loaned, with the exception of the impact of the interest bonus. Da, 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 da. However, amounts attributable to this type of loan are eligible for separate interest bonus on the fixed interest participating policy loans. Since the crediting rates will vary from year to year, the net cost will vary and can be positive or negative. Fixed interest policy loans have more uncertainty than standard loans. Uh, that None of that matters. This is the type of loan option that would make me kind of hesitate because number one, I'm not sure I understand exactly what they're getting at here. They're saying it's a fixed participating policy loan, but they can change the rate. And they're also saying that I'm gonna to continue to earn interest uh, as if there was no loan on the policy, but they do have the right to impact the interest bonus that I'm earning on this policy. So it seems like, now you'll notice those words were not located in any of the variable language here above. And so it seems to me that if I end up choosing this fixed participating policy loan because of the way it sounds, it's a fixed loan versus a variable loan, and we're all familiar with mortgages, uh, variable interest rate mortgages are you know, three in one arms, five in one arms versus a fixed rate. So we understand the concept here, fixed versus variable. Yet when I read the actual terms of the loan itself, it doesn't seem like it's fixed. They say that I'm going to continue to earn my interest like normal, but then they also say that they can change the way the bonuses on the policy work if I use the fixed participating policy loan. So folks, you just have to understand that these companies are in business to make money. And when you see loan provisions like this that either that don't make sense or it seems like the words that they're using don't line up with the definitions, that should give you pause. What makes a good policy from a loan standpoint? A good policy is going to have loans that are flexible. A good policy is going to have loans where you get to control where your money is invested. A good policy is probably going to have a real wash loan, not one of these wash loans where they can actually charge you more than they credit you. Uh, a good policy and good loan provisions, if it's a variable rate, it's going to have a cap. So, you know, this variable rate above that we were just looking at, this is a decent variable rate because they they tell us outright, hey, 6% is the max and it tracks with the Moody's corporate bond yield. And, you know, we're not going to mess around. There's no none of this bonus language uh, in the variable rate loan. So to me, that's a good loan. But most people don't want variable loans. They want fixed loans. And so they get duped into choosing this fixed loan below without realizing the type of impact it's going to have on your income and your cash growth for the rest of your policy life. Not to mention, how many times do they let you switch back and forth? What if you make the wrong choice and they don't let you switch? So all these things are things that need to be considered. But uh, I digress. Loan provisions are super important on these policies. If you're looking for a cash value life policy where you're trying to grow as much cash as possible and leverage that cash for lifetime income, then you absolutely have to understand the loan provisions that are contained in your policy. So if you have a policy already and you've never discussed the loan provisions that are available to you, I'd encourage you to reach out to us. We can have that conversation with you. Uh, it's a pretty easy, straightforward conversation. If you're considering one of these policies and you either haven't found someone that you trust, you haven't found an expert in this space, I'd encourage you to reach out to us. Uh, we, we are experts in this space. This is what we do. We know this better than anyone. And if you're working with somebody that's telling you you need to buy one of these things because it's the best thing since sliced bread, and they have not mentioned anything in regards to the loan provisions on the policies that they've shown you, you should reach out to us and we will put you in a really, really good position. All right, so that's the end of our two-part index universal life insurance policy loan videos. If you've watched both part one and part two, that's about 20 minutes uh, in the weeds on loan provisions as it relates to indexed universal life insurance. And you probably know more than I would say half of the people out there selling these policies. So congratulations to you. And I hope that you found it helpful. Until next time, take care.